Destiny. And I'm Brianna. And this is our tiny house that we call Matchbox that we've been living in for two months. Me and Bri have been together since 2016. We actually got married last November, so we're newlyweds. Newlyweds. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm like the dreamer. So I'm like head in the clouds. I'm like go with the flow, you know. Don't stress about things you can't control. She needs a list. She needs an itinerary. I'm she a Virgo, needs, yeah. so I She needs calendars. She needs dates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that was doing a lot of like the calls with the builders and writing everything down and then yeah. just being like, hey, this is like, these are our options. And she's like, yeah, it's going to work out. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, it, it'll work out. <laughs> it's like, we can try that one, but let's also try this one. She's like, but this one, it's, you know, <laughs> it's like she she keeps me grounded and then I take her away from the reality sometimes. When we were thinking about going tiny, we were living in Vegas in a, in a two bedroom apartment. So we were like, we need an alternative. We don't want to buy a house because we don't know where we want to live permanently. And if you buy a house, like, you know, it doesn't move. So you have to live wherever it is. Um, so we started looking into uh, vans and then we also looked, that went into RVs, kind of just spiraled all the way into tiny homes. And it was like the perfect combination. It's wheels, but it's a full house. It's not just a van. Traveling is something that we always wanted to do, but didn't yeah. really, have the means to just be traveling abroad so much. So we're like, hey, let's get a house that we can move to different cities and explore. <laughs> yeah, especially because we do eventually want to buy land and have a permanent home, but the tiny home kind of gives us the advantage to move to different cities, see how we like it, you know, and then choose a place to be permanent. Matchbox is 30 feet long by eight and a half feet wide and 13 and a half feet tall. We actually found this spot through a Facebook group. We're currently in a side lot located in Portland, Oregon. We actually moved our house from LA, California here and the move was a little messy, but we're glad it got here and everything is intact. So our hosts actually built this concrete pad that the house is sitting on. I think it's like 16 feet long. So we actually have a, a sewer hookup that goes straight into the ground. And then our electrical hookup is just a cord that goes from the back of the house into the 50 amp plug that they set up for us. And then there's a water line actually sticking out of the ground that we have a water hose going under the house too. All right, so yeah, come take a look inside Matchbox. Welcome to our tiny house. In total, it's 399 square feet. And this is our dog, Scotty. <laughs> this is our kitchen slash sometimes workspace. We also eat our dinner here every day. This is actually a table, also a chalkboard, that we use on a daily basis. Sometimes I sit here with my laptop and do some work. We also set up the iPad and watch TV sometimes when we eat dinner. We have some chairs back there that just fold open and we sit down and just like to have a meal together. So we really liked that there was this open shelf concept here because we didn't really want cabinets that we couldn't reach in the back of. And this also helped us to reduce like our dishes. We had a lot before. <laughs> we put little hooks under here to just hang our mugs. We like to drink tea and hot lemon water, things like that. So, you know, there was no space up there to put them. So we're like, let's hang it. Yeah. And it kind of worked out. This is our sink. I think this is one of the things we were really excited about when we first moved in, like a farmhouse looking sink. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, during the move, it cracked. So right now we still we still need to repair it, but I think. Yeah, it's cosmetic, so we, we aren't too worried about it. It doesn't leak anything, so that's good. There's also a dishwasher here, which if we had built it ourselves, we wouldn't have done the dishwasher just because we don't really need it. We hand wash our dishes, uh, but sometimes we put things in there to like dry after we wash it. Thanks to our sponsor, Vessi. Do you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain? If so, you're gonna love Vessi sneakers. I know I sure do because no matter the weather, I love to be outdoors. 
Vessies are 100% waterproof and snowproof. So bring on those wet weather adventures and look good while doing it with these stylish sneaks. They're made with Dymatex. This is a high-tech knit material that keeps your tootsies cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Vessies are so breathable, comfy, and lightweight. Really doesn't feel like they should be waterproof. I can verify that they really are. I absolutely love my Vessies. Feels like walking on a cloud. With our recent travels across the rainy Pacific Northwest, these have been perfect. And it feels good knowing that Vessies are sustainably made and 100% vegan. No Christian, not like that. Vessies are my new go-to shoes. Check them out in the link below for a pair of your own Vessie shoes because life is messy, but your feet should be dry and cute. Since we do not have an oven or a stove, we really just work with our Ninja Foodie. It's an air fryer, it toasts things, it's an instant pot, it dehydrates things. Honestly, we've baked lasagna in here, we've baked cakes in here, so it's just very diverse. You can do so much with this, we don't need a stove or an oven at all. You know, we hung up knives and stuff just to reduce space in the drawers. I cook every single day and so we have many <laughs> spices. spices. Uh, we actually have two drawers just full of random spices and things like that. And yeah, we have, I think, 36 drawers and cabinets in the kitchen alone. The kitchen. And yeah, yeah I, the kitchen was like the biggest thing that I was worried about. And so just having all this space really just makes it easier to yeah. function. And we don't have a stove top, but we do have these uh, induction tops. So we just store them here, we have two. Uh, whenever we wanna cook like on a pan or a pot or something like that, we just take them out, plug them in, cook on them. Then on this side, we have our fridge. I think it's a little smaller than a full size fridge. It actually had an accident in the move as well, which we covered with this whiteboard. <laughs> it kind of fell right over onto the counter and got this little dent, which was also fortunately just cosmetic, so. We were good to go. You would never know that anything happened. Yeah, <laughs> we have our meal plan up here and it works out. We also have these pull out pantries, which we love these. We've seen them in so many houses and we're like, we need that. So we just put all of our cans, ton of jackfruit because we're vegan <laughs> and lots of, you know, just different oils and stuff like that. Whatever fits, we just put it where we can put it. We had this big open space here and we just decided to put a microwave here because we do reheat a lot of foods. And then we also put the cutting board here because it's a little, it's a little long for some of the drawers. Uh, we have snacks in these drawers. So most of this over here is snacks and extra utensils that we don't use a lot. Up here we have like a little tea section. This is where I keep all of my tea and tinctures. Down here is kind of uh, everything that we can fit. Cake mix and things like that. And then the rest of it is just really storage for appliances. So we have like our smoothie blender down there um, and just a bunch of other things for the kitchen. Yeah. We started looking at tiny homes in October 2021 and our lease was up in April, mm -hmm. right? So it gave us about six months ish. We did a bunch of, you know, consultation calls with like builders and movers and just started looking into like, where do we park these things? And uh, yeah, we had a very short amount of time. It yeah. was the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, because it was trying to research everything at once. Like where, where can we park a tiny home? How do we get it there? Like, who are we gonna get to move it? How big do we even want it? What do we want our layout to look like? What do we need in a house? What do we just want? You know, it was a lot of stress. <laughs> I think initially in the beginning, we were focusing more on what it was gonna look like rather mm -hmm. than the other stuff. Just because, you know, when you see tiny houses on social media, you're like, oh, I want it to look like this. Yeah, and it gets swept up in the fantasy, but we had to think like, what do we actually need in a house? I live on social media, especially Instagram, and I was following every single like tiny page you could find out there and tiny homies popped up and I was like, oh, this layout is like really nice. Oh, it's a like couple that builds houses. So I just reached out to them and they were so nice. Like they honestly were like mentors to us. They were telling us like the real deal, like, 
you know, you're going to have to pay taxes on this and just like different things that we didn't even consider when it came to buying a house. And yeah. so we did a call with them. Um, they brought us back to reality because they were like, yeah, your budget with like the amount, like the things that we want in the yeah. home versus what it's going to cost. It wasn't matching. And then also yeah. with the timeline, they just like really let us know that, you know, it takes time to build homes. And it turned out that they had a house that they built a year before that somebody was moving out of. He bought a bigger house and the layout was exactly what we wanted. Yeah. And Minus like one or two things, yeah. but it was basically what we were asking them to build us. So we looked at that home and ended up talking to um, the guy who was selling it. He was living in um, L.A. So we drove from Vegas to L.A. On Christmas to actually, Eve. On Christmas Eve to actually tour the house. He got back to us like January 4th, mm -hmm. something like that, and let us know like he's going to move forward with us. So It was very nerve-wracking because at that point it was so close to like you know, when we were about yeah. to move out, like we really need to get the ball rolling. We, we had no house yet. Yeah, we didn't really have a backup plan. We sort of had a backup plan. We we're gonna go with another uh, builder that told us they could also do the same thing. Um, they kind of had a house that was already built, but it would have been smaller than this and not the exact layout we wanted. So we would have been like compromising. Yeah, when we toured the house for the first time, we kind of just like walked in like, oh, this is our new house. We had like measuring <laughs> tape and he was looking at us like. <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, we're going to put this over here. We're going to yeah. put that there. But that's how you kind of have to do things. You really need to like manifest them. And back here is our bathroom. We actually have a barn door that has a full size mirror, which is essential when trying to get ready for the day. So we we're really glad that that was there. And then... This is our bathroom. We have a six foot long closet, which is perfect because we both have a lot of clothes, even though we decluttered a lot before moving here. So this is my side. We have all of our sweaters, my Tims and my hats down here and just shirts and all that stuff. And then we also use the side of it for our cleaning supplies, like our uh, vacuum and broom and Swiffer and things like that. We use this little table when we're folding clothes because sometimes folding clothes on your body or in the air is difficult. So we have that. And then this side is Brianna's. She has some of her military clothes here and just all of her, you know, essentials. We also have in the middle just a bunch of random things like her military gear. We have our suitcases and just anything that we just have to like stuff somewhere really just goes in here. Uh, one thing that we didn't see when we moved in was a place for us to hang our towels. So we ended up just buying these little like, I don't know, 50 cent hooks from Ikea and we just hang our towels here so they could dry. So this is our sink area. We actually couldn't fit an actual soap pump here. So we bought one of these ones that we can put on the wall and it's been very helpful. This is our mirror and it actually opens as a medicine cabinet. So we keep our toothbrush and, you know, face things in here and just anything that we can store in there goes there. And this is our shower. I really like it because it feels like you're like kind of in a spaceship. Like it's, <laughs> it feels very weird in there. Um, but if it's very spacious, like you can shower probably with two people. And another thing that we wanted to do is just like keep our products off the floor. So we got one of those pumps in there that kind of just, you know, has our shampoo and body wash and things like that so that, you know, it's clean in here. And then this is our toilet area. We just have a regular toilet. We don't have like a composting toilet or anything fancy like that, but this was definitely essential because we needed storage for just, you know, everyday things. We use the top area for our clothes when we like get out the shower. And I think that was like really important, so. This is our washer dryer combo. We have a love hate relationship with it. I think we're just still learning how to use it, but you know, it works and it does what it's supposed to do. And my Nana actually made this little curtain for us because this is where we hide all of the things that, you know, you need in a home, like our cleaning supplies, our towels, uh, first aid kits, soap, all those kinds of things are in here. So initially it didn't look too good. So we we're like, let's just cover it with a nice curtain. So. That's what we did. The owner before, he sold it to us for uh, 90,000, but we took out a loan. So we're, we're gonna end up paying back 100,000 because we're paying him off and then paying off the loan. So with the interest from the loan, it comes out to about 100,000. It's a personal loan and we got it through a company called Lightstream. So the loan was for- um, 45K. 45K, yeah. The tiny house definitely feels more affordable than an apartment because we were paying like, 1400 a month 
so when you add that up for the year, it's like, what, 20K or something like that for the year. And so this entire house costs 100K. Mm -hmm. So we can pay that off in, you know, five years or something instead of hopping to apartments every year. That was just 1400 when we were paying it, but it was going up when we were moving out. So that's another reason we wanted to move. The price was going up, so. Initially, there were a lot of costs that we were like, oh, this kind of sucks and like putting down down payments. Luckily, we were able to do like a payment plan with the man who sold us the house on top of the loan. So we kind of have like two payment plans that we're going through right now. Um, so that really like helps us. Um, and then also like the land that we're renting is pretty affordable. So we're able to just do that but honestly like we've paid we've only been here for two months now and yeah. i'm like yes i like these bills like it doesn't feel like we're paying a lot right. and we own this you know like we could put holes in the wall and not have to worry about it and and, and, and the paint the wall right <laughs> <laughs> and in the other apartments like we couldn't do things like that so i definitely yeah. feel like it's it's worth the money it hurt initially because that's more money than we've ever like seen <laughs> in our yeah. lives you know it's it's a lot of upfront costs but it's gonna pay off in the end we pay six fifty for the spot, and it includes water, trash, and electrical. Oh, and, and sewage. Mm -hmm. And over here are the steps that lead up to the bedroom loft. But you can see, like, there's a huge step up here. We actually have these that pull out. We have two of these. Um, they are steps as well as storage. So we have some tools in this one. And this one, I think, is just all of the paint, which we'll get to in a bit, that's in here. Uh, these steps are also good for Scotty because he's so small, he can't make that big leap, so these are very helpful. There's also two extra drawers here, which also just have more, you know, junk, junk storage in there. I also really like this area because it is cushion. Me and Scotty lay here sometimes. Sometimes I'll bring my laptop and I'll lay here and do some work. Sometimes I'll sit on the stairs and do it. So it's just another kind of like chill out area. And if we have guests over, they can always sit down here and socialize. Yeah. All right, so come upstairs and look at our bedroom loft. Welcome to our bedroom. The one thing that we really love about this is that we don't have to crawl to get into the bed. We actually can pretty much stand up and just hunch over. I can vacuum up here, which is really convenient. And yeah, we have a queen size bed that is very comfy. We would love to get a king, but I think it would take up a lot of the space. We also have Scotty's bed uh, to the left of us. He sleeps there every night. So this is our lovely mural. We actually repainted it like three or four times. It had red in it, it had different shades of green, and this is what we came up with. I really like it just because the colors are bright but not too bright, and the shapes are just really like, you know, on point. So it works for us, and I think it matches the house well. This is our book storage area. Well, it's a bookcase. It came built into the house. So we bought these little bins from Ikea so we can just store some extra things in here. Uh, we also use this area for like just sentimental items. So I actually have my football helmet from when I played tackle football. Uh, we have our memory jar with all of our memories in there, just tickets and things like that. And I also have uh, my pet rock journal who wasn't supposed to be a pet rock. Um, it's a geode and I tried to open it multiple times with a lot of different tools and it's just, it won't open. So this is Gerald the geode. He has an Instagram page. <laughs> we also put in some motion lights over here for when we go down the stairs at night so that we can see because it gets pretty dark and we want to just be safe to make sure the steps are pretty tall. So we just want to make sure we don't trip going down the stairs. On this side of the house, we have our home office up here. And then down here, we have our living space. We do have to bend over to get in here. I think the height is around four feet, eight inches, but it works out because we sit down anyway and watch movies here. So instead of buying a huge TV to put on this wall and take up a lot of space, we actually use a projector up here and we just stream it on the wall. This is how we just relax and watch our Netflix movies. And another cool thing is that this also opens up into a bed. So not only can our guests stay here, but we can also just lay down and watch movies here. The person we bought the house from actually used this as a bedroom and we were going to do that as well because we thought it would be easier to just live down here and not have to go up and down stairs to go to the bathroom at night. But we actually thought it would be a nice idea to just turn this into more of like a movie room slash guest room. 
I do social media management and digital marketing. I'm a software engineer, so I'm also trying to freelance on the side to build websites for people. We both work from home, so it's definitely been an adjustment living in the tiny house only because we're working back to back now. I think before when we were working in the office, we were side by side, so we couldn't see each other, you know, in Zoom meetings and stuff like that. But other than that, it's been good. We kind of schedule our calls like different times. Sometimes we do have calls that are the same, the same time, time and we're sitting less than two feet from each other and it, it still yeah. works, you know, so I think it's. It's what we like to do. Sometimes I'll work from the bedroom, I'll work from the stairs, I can work from the dining room table. So there's so many different places that we can go during the workday and it just feels, you know, like we can move around and not feel on top of each other all day. Noise canceling headphones are the key to that, for sure. Sometimes we go out, we can take our laptops and just go work from a cafe or something. So that works out too. All right, so this is our office space. We were able to fit two full-size desks in here. Um, they're both standing desks, so when we get tired of sitting and just typing all day, we can stand up, stretch our legs, things like that. This is also where our mini split lives. So this heats and cools the house. It's a heater and a um, air conditioner. So it works pretty well. We also have a remote, so we can do it from that side of the house and just turn it on and off. This is Destiny's desk. This is also where we have our internet. This is actually a mesh internet system. So uh, the way it works is our hosts have the main router in their house, and then we add this little node piece so that it can extend to our home. It's been the best solution so far. We tried those little routers you can put a SIM card into. That didn't work. So this has been the best solution, and we didn't have to drill a hole in the house or anything. It literally is just um, an adapter you plug into the electrical port. And over here is our dehumidifier. I think it covers about 1200 square feet, so it's perfect for our size home. Uh, we basically plug it in every night so that it can soak all of the moisture out of the air because it rains a lot here in Portland. So this was a definite need for the tiny home. I feel like a lot of times we don't see people that look like us in tiny houses, like, you know, queer, couple of color. Like I don't see that a lot, a young couple at that, um, that we, and we're lost. Like, we don't know what we're doing with our careers, like, you know, long term. We don't have a lot of money. So it's like, sometimes we just don't see that. And I think that's what we needed to see when we we're going through this journey. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just like really glad to just be sharing the journey on social and just teaching people that you don't have to have these like large, glamorous lives. Like, you don't need a huge house. Sometimes we walk around and we're like, how many people live in that huge house, you know? Like, yeah. and why? <laughs> Not that we're judging, but like now we know the other side. Like, you don't yeah. need a huge house you're just paying for space that you're not living in you know yeah because so. we wanted that at one point we wanted the big house with the big yard and the, the fence you know the american dream but it's like your dream can change you can have your own dream it doesn't have to be big like you said paying for space you're not even living in you know a lot of people have these places they have attics they never go up there you know so it's like you know live with what you need you know, and the space that you need. We were already living a non-traditional life. We got married in like a small chapel in Vegas and now we're living in a tiny house. So we're already going against the grain, I feel like. And it just, it feels really good to not be living by anybody else's standards. You know, like we're just doing what we want and what we can afford and yeah. it's working out for us. We've seen so many different houses online. We're like, wow, like there's so many different options too. Like you don't have to only have a, a house that looks a certain way, you know? Like there's so many layouts and sizes and places you can put it. Like it, it's amazing. Yeah. And they're getting, I don't want to say they're getting weirder. They're getting, um, <laughs> uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like more interesting. Yeah. Every time we see one, it's like, oh man, we could have done that. Oh, that's so cool. And the cool thing is that we can always make adjustments to our house, you know, like we own this now. Because it's so, ours. Yeah, we can do anything <laughs> we want to, so that's nice. Yeah. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.